morning. So good to have you guys at Destiny Church today. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Women's Day to all of our beautiful mothers and daughters out there. And it's just a wonderful day to celebrate Him, to celebrate God's love and the blessings that He's put in our life. And I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for His love. So many times we can just get kind of down in the dumps. But how many of you know you can just connect with the Lord and He'll lift you up every time? Isn't that right? Lord, we thank you for your love to us today. We thank you for being sovereign. We thank you for being a mighty God. Lord, we just celebrate you today. Lord, we just dedicate this time as a time of worship and connecting with you and your spirit and your people, Lord. And we just love you and praise you. Let's all stand. Let's worship the Lord and thank Him for how He lifted us. Grace and mercy is my testimony. 
wishing all our mothers a happy Mother's Day. We want to welcome everybody to the house of the Lord today. The sun is shining finally outside again. Hallelujah to that. If your stock of gopher wood can be okay for a few more days. So we're going to be all right now. I'm excited that the Lord has given us a beautiful day to celebrate our mothers today. I'm excited about the Word of God He's placed in my heart today. We're working on families. We're all learning how to be better. Uh, heads of households, moms and dads, sons and daughters, and making a house a home. If you're visiting today, if you're a guest of ours, we want to welcome you to the house of the Lord. There is a card in front of you to your left or to your right. You should see one in your vicinity that says new here for the question mark. We'd love to have you fill that out at some time during the service. You can place in these boxes at the doorways that are here, these black boxes. But we'd love to have you come by the welcome center before you leave here today. We will have a gift for you there with a folder. Uh, that has some information about our church, about when we meet, different times that we meet, some history about how we got started, and also uh, we have a gift for all of our young ladies and mothers today, 16 uh, years and older. All our ladies will receive a gift from us on their way out today, so make sure that you get that. We want to honor our mothers today. We have a video uh, that we're going to show you, so let's pay attention to the screen up here and let's honor our mothers today. Today, 
that you would help our hearts in this Mother's Day. We're thankful for the times that we had. For those that are estranged from their mothers, God, I pray for healing and reconciliation. For those wounds that you desire to plant seeds in, God, I speak increase to homes and families today in the mighty name of Jesus. And now, Lord, we are entering in to worship. Our desire is that we worship you in spirit and in truth. And as we do that, Lord, that you surround us. You surround us with your presence. You surround us with your love, your grace, and your mercy. Lord, we are looking for salvation in your house today. Healing and deliverance in the house today, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen, church? Amen. Amen. Stand with me and let's continue to worship.
about his goodness and his grace and his mercy. His presence is here. I pray that you feel it tangibly. But even if you don't know that his presence is here, know that he loves you. Know that he cares for you. Know that the miracles are all around you. Those of us that know him as Lord and Savior. Those of us that he's healed. Those of us that he's delivered. Those of us that he's set free. Those of us that he's given those great things, every good and perfect gift comes from him. All of us worship him in spirit and in truth this morning, church. He is here to worship him the way that you feel that to worship him this morning. You can raise your hands, you can just sit in his presence, but it's time. Let me hear you sing again. You sound good. Worthy, 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 
of our praise. Oh, I think we need to say his name today. Don't you think we need to shout his name today? On the count of three, we're going to say the name above all names. The name that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. That Jesus Christ is Lord. Are you ready, church? One, two, three. Jesus! I'm thankful for everybody that's decided to make a choice to be here today. Some of you are with your mothers today. Others of us are visiting their mothers. We, as a church plant, have always just kind of wondered how Mother's Day would be because many people who are coming to our church have mothers that go to other churches and they tend to be with their moms on Mother's Day. And we bless that. We are excited about that. But today, we have also are receiving members into our church family today. So if you are uh, becoming a member today, I'll address you in just a moment. I just want to put you on notice. I'm going to read our Declaration of Faith here shortly, and we're going to receive members into our family today. We're talking about families this month. Our house is coming along nicely, as you can see over here. I'll address that more in a second. For those of you that may be a guest today, I'll go in on what we have going on over here that we're going to lay on our hearts to do. But before we receive members today, I want to recognize a couple that felt led to move here to Hattiesburg, Mississippi to be with us. They are licensed ministers in the Church of God, and they felt that this was their church home. They found jobs here, they have moved here, and they are with us and among us today. They're going to be joining as members here shortly, but I want to recognize them individually. George and Christy, would you come on up? This is George and Christy Cannon. Would you let them...
proud of some of these. They're introverts by nature. We have a few more that are introverts that will be joining today. Greg and the rest of Lacey's family will be joining today. We'll meet with them privately. And some of you said, oh, you would do that, Pastor Ron, why didn't you tell us before? <laughs> but I want to address these today, and I'll be addressing others later. But I'm thankful for all of you. I'm glad you're here today. I'm glad you made this decision. Some of you have been waiting a while to do this, and I'm thankful for this opportunity today. You guys realize in presenting yourself for membership that you're assuming a solemn obligation and it is expected that you will always be true to your promise and faithfully fulfill and discharge your obligation as a loyal member. I'm going to ask you just five questions. George and Christy are coming by the way of transfer, but I've asked them as I do all transfers to just kind of recommit. Today I'm going to make a commitment to you guys as well. Do you publicly confess and testify that you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and the full pardon of your sins? If so, say, I do. I do. Are you willing to walk in the light of Scripture as it shines upon your path? If so, say, I am. I am. Are you willing to abide by and subscribe to the discipline of the Church of God as outlined in the Scripture and set forth in the minutes of the International General Assembly? If so, say, I am. I am. Are you willing to support the Church with your attendance and temporal means to the best of your ability as the Lord prospers you? If so, say, I will. I will. Lastly, or close to lastly here, do you agree to be subject to the counsel and admonition of those who are over you in the Lord? If so, say, I am. I am. If there be any member who has any legal objection to any of these becoming members of the church today, the objector may now so state that has never happened in the <laughs> By the authority vested in me as a minister of the church of God, I take great pleasure in welcoming you into this membership and extending you the right hand of as well, may I encourage you to call for the services of your pastor when needed. I have confidence that you will forever be a faithful member and a blessing to this church, and the church will be a blessing to you. And I pray our fellowship will always be bound together with unbroken love. Now let me just talk to you for a moment about me and this church family. I want to make some commitments to you. I commit today to believe the best in you. I commit today to pray for you. I commit to be there for you when you need me to the best of my ability. One of the great things about the family of God, until I can get there or if I could be there, there will be a family member to be there with you. And I will be on my way as quickly as possible. I also make a commitment today to stretch you, to let God use you greater than you could ever imagine, to help you find that destiny which you belong to the kingdom of heaven and what he's called you to do and encourage you, and if necessary, God forbid, to discipline you when we see you moving in a path that will be detrimental to you, your family, or your walk with the Lord. I love you, I believe in you, and I look forward to what God has for all of you. Some of you have been with us while, some of you just arrived here. We welcome you, we love you. You make me feel welcome this morning. Sir. for our children. We do have Children's Church here. If you're a guest of ours today, you've got children from the ages of 4 through 12. We are teaching them the Word of God on their level. If you would like for them to remain with you today, they're more than welcome to do that. But if you would like for them to go for Mother's Day and get a break for about 45 minutes, you're welcome to do that also. You can register and go out to this door right here or this one. Right in the corner of the building, there's registration there. Just to make sure everybody's safe. And if you desire to go up and observe just for a few moments, you're welcome to do that. Make sure that that's something that you want to do for your children. I'm going to dismiss them in just a moment. We do receive God's call. God's led it. Led us to do it the way I've done it ever since we started. That's His desire, and that's what we're going to continue to do. These boxes I've already mentioned. You can place that at any time you want to during the service. Your tithes are offered gifts to missions that we're going to be sharing. We've got another opportunity to give that you can sign up for later today that Teresa will be sharing with you in our announcements. But I'm going to bless our tithes and offering here this morning. And as I say amen, children, you are dismissed to Children's Church. And those that want to welcome the members in, whether you're a guest of ours today or you're a member, come on up and let's welcome these today. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, I love you. I thank you today for your church. I thank you for your house. I thank you for your family. I thank you for these new members of our family today. I thank you, Lord, that you have a plan and a purpose and that everyone has a place that they belong. And Lord, I pray today that these that I pray over would be symbols of seeds 
to many more coming and joining this family. All do this great vision you call us to. We need so many more. And Lord, we also need resources to do that. You've been so faithful these nine years to give us resources, not only what we needed, but also to help others and help other missions and ministries. We're going to do that again today, God. We're going to be giving to those in our area and those across the world that need our resources, God. May you multiply them. May you bless those that are giving today and those that are thinking about it, Lord. May you encourage them and realize that this is a promise from you. If we bring our first fruits, everything else will be blessed. And Lord, we thank you for the gifts of our children. We thank you, God, that they're going to learn the Word of God on their level today. We thank you for those that are working with them so diligently, Lord. Samuel and Lindsay and their fabulous team. Let people know today that there's always room for us to be able to work in your great kingdom, to be a part of this great family. And as we welcome these today, Lord, we know that the witnesses in heaven are rejoicing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Children, you are dismissed to Children's Church. You guys will come on up and greet these today.
God together and um, seeing what God has for you, all, all of you. Um, there is a place for everyone here at Destiny Church. We've got a few announcements that we want to bring to your attention. Um, as Pastor Don said, today is Mother's Day, so we have a special gift for all of our ladies, not just mothers, but if we celebrate all of our beautiful women here. And if you're 16 and up and you're a lady, my right, guys, you wouldn't want this anyway. Um, if you're 16 and up, you're a lady, we have a special gift for you as you leave today. So make sure you get one of those, and we love you very much. And just always be reminded how much you're loved here at Destiny. We have some youth fundraisers coming up. Um, we have a car wash coming up next Saturday, May 18th, and that is from 9 to 2. And hopefully weather will be permitting uh, for us to have this um, car wash. It's going to be at the AutoZone on Highway 98, 6114 Highway 98 in Hattiesburg. Um, so that's right there on the highway so we can be more visible. And um, it is for donation, um, but the proceeds go toward these young people. They're raising money for their tuition for youth camp. So they're going to have fun later on with it, but they're going to work hard for it now. So we really appreciate them taking the time to, um, to work for their tuition and their youth camp, helping their parents out. Uh, getting these funds raised, but also some of it is going to be going to our, our YWEA mission project. YWEA stands for Youth World Evangelism Action. So it is a focus that youth, young people kind of look outward, um, not looking inward, but looking outward to a need. And um, this year our project is the continent of Asia, is the Asian commitment. So you can read about that there. If you would like to give today, you don't necessarily want your car wash, but you would like to give today, you can do that. Just um, identify whatever your donation is on your check or giving envelope, and we will apply it toward those two causes. Um, next Sunday night, we have a baptism, and these are always so much fun at Destiny Church. Um, we set up a baptistry right here, and um, we just worship and celebrate new life in the Lord, and it's just a beautiful time. So if you would like to be baptized, if you've recommitted your life or if you've given your life to the Lord recently, if you would like to be baptized, um, Pastor Don would just need to know, and um, we would get that set up for you, and we would love to celebrate with you. Next Sunday, also on Sunday morning, um, we're going to be doing graduation recognition here in the sanctuary, uh, similar to how we did church membership today. We're just going to recognize our graduates. However, we have a lot of graduates, and so it may take a little time, but we're so excited for these young people and what, what they have accomplished and we just like to um, give honor to them and uh, recognize them for their accomplishments and to bless them in their future. So that's what this will be um, a celebration of for next Sunday. We're also continuing our prayer drive. We have individual maps of certain locations. If you would like to be a bit more organized like I do and check things off, um, those are available at our Welcome Center. So we can get the 13-mile radius of Hattiesburg covered in prayer. Every business, every home, every school, we want to make sure that they're covered in prayer for our faith family. And also, today is kicking off our baby bottle boomerang. This is something that we've done the last several years at Destiny Church. And um, what this is, it is raising money for Hope Clinic, which is our crisis pregnancy center here in Hattiesburg. These are wonderful people. This is a wonderful cause. Giving young women other options um, when they find themselves with an unexpected pregnancy. And we have um, a baby bottle boomerang that's starting today on Mother's Day, and it ends on Father's Day, June the 16th. So if you would like to participate, it's very simple. You just check out a bottle. And um, Terry Jesperson is coordinating this. Terry, if you want to raise your hand, she's going to be at the um, table in the foyer after church. You just check out a bottle or two, and you just fill it up. Fill it up during our time frame of, of now to June 16th with change, money, checks, whatever you would like. And then you check them back in because we do have to have a count of how many we checked out. Um, so we um, keep up with it like that. Thank, thankfully, we have somebody organized like Terry to keep that um, for us. But we have a quick video just to give you a testimony of what this ministry can do for our community.
I really didn't see the signs or the symptoms due to me working two jobs, having to worry about the bills, and a friend at the time was here with me, and she was pregnant, so I was helping her with a lot of stuff, so the signs was never there because I never had breasts, and I took four tests. <laughs> I took four tests, all of them came back positive, and I also went to urgent care that same night. Once they confirmed it at urgent care, I didn't know what to do. The lady at urgent care was actually telling me about um, OBs and stuff like that. I was like, um, you all don't have abortion clinics. She was like, I cannot recommend you to that. I said, that's fine. At that moment, I still was in my head of what I'm going to do. I see Hope Clinic, I seen the sign now saying they do free ultrasounds. Lexus came in and she, like most of the girls that come in, was considering abortion. She didn't think she was going to have any support at all. So we sat down and had that honest talk about what that looked like in her life, uh, whether she had an abortion or chose to carry. She came out and said, you know, this is um, not the right thing to do. I don't believe in it. I made the choice to be sexually active and I feel like I need to take the responsibility. And I don't think that I have a choice because I don't know how to move forward in this situation. Our expectations of what how people are gonna react is always worse than what it's really gonna be. Had more support from her family than she thought. She came back here, did the ultrasound. Once I heard my baby girl's heartbeat, I couldn't do it. The whole time I was in Chicago, they called, Hope called, they check on me, they would ask me how the baby was doing, if I had the baby, they called. I was still a concern for them, even though I was 12 hours away. And when I brought her back, it was like when I first came, so much love. I love being a mother. I'm happy I kept my baby because her being here pushed me more to actually do what I want to do. Amen. So that is a testimony of what this ministry here in Hattiesburg does. And they, they provide so much support for young women who um, are hitting against the wall and don't know what to do. And uh, so we just thank you for your support that you're going to do for them. And uh, we continually pray for them in all of their efforts. We love you guys and we look forward to the Word of God and to see what um, our house over here is up to. Um, this this week. So, thank you, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Our house is coming along nicely. If you are a guest of ours today, um, God led us to take building a home as an analogy about making a house a home, a spiritual home. Home is where the heart is. That's what we say, right? It's not scripture, but that's the saying that we say, and. So it doesn't really matter today if your home consists of just you or there's multiple people in your house. You can make that house a home with the Lord. And what inspired this, I was listening to a song by Casting Crowns multiple weeks in a row as God began to work this inside of me. He's told our church ever since we moved into this building that we would be a refuge for families, that we would instruct, that we would allow God to work in families and heal them and restore them. And there's evidence of that under my voice today. And so if you're listening in, welcome today. If you can't be with us, please tune in and get this and apply this to your life. This will be something you can do. We want to help you any way we can. But that song I mentioned is uh, called House of Their Dreams. But as the song progresses, and we'll play it for you before the series ends, it is not a house of their dreams. And the chorus keeps saying they're all alone together. All alone together in the house of your dreams. And that can happen sometimes. We can get so busy, we can get so caught up in other things in life and cares this world that our homes are just dysfunctional, they're disruptive, and so God's leading us to be able to work on that. And so our house is coming along nicely. The first week we looked at the foundation and how the foundation is Jesus Christ. That God has called us to lay that firm foundation on the rock of Jesus. And then the next week we looked at the framing, the framing of faith framed in faith and God's word and what that looks like, how it, the bones of the house are the frames and the words of God, those rules and principles we apply according to the word of God gives that structure and allows us to withstand a lot of things that happen and also it defines boundaries and God led us to repair breaches. 
And so you can go back and get that and look at that on our app. We had some trouble loading it, but it's on our app now and it's on our YouTube channel as well as you can go back to our Facebook page and look at that. But today we're going to get in to what's wrapped. The siding is on. You were here last week. Now you know the siding is on today. The roof has been blacked in as well. And so we're going to look today about a home that is wrapped in worship. So would you bow your heads and stretch your hands this way and pray for me and pray with me that God will speak to us today. Heavenly Father, I love you. Lord, I'm thankful for the word you placed in my heart today. And Lord, I just ask that you would take these few moments that we're about to be together. Many of us are going to leave here and go celebrate our moms or celebrate our wives and celebrate a family day and this will be a family time this afternoon. We're not having anything here so that we can go celebrate that, but for these few moments, Lord, can we just focus on you, get all of our minds and our hearts here. And I know, Lord, I want, I'm mindful of the time. I want them to be released so they're not worried about the time today. So, Lord, condense this or add to it however you want to do. Lord, I want you to say what you desire to say. I want it to penetrate our hearts, and I want us to apply it, God. And I know for that to happen, I need to decrease and have you increase. I look for you to speak today, and we will give you all glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's look at wrapped in worship. If you've been around me for any length of time, you know I like to say worship kind of defines in three categories. That's time, talents, and treasures. And we talk about worshiping in the house of God all the time, that we give our time. We give our time today. If you're gathered in the house of the Lord, giving your time today. Some of you have brought uh, your talents. Some of you have served today in some way, form, or fashion. I'm loving to see our young people out with these signs on Sunday mornings. I'm loving them to be a part of this and, and teaching them that they have a role and a place. Our children singing on Easter. That everybody has a talent that they can give. And also our treasures. Many of you brought your tithes and your offerings into the storehouse of the Lord and you're giving to these other missions that we talked about. So what does that look like in the home? Well, certainly we teach that in our homes. We teach that God is first and foremost in our homes, and we teach our children by coming to church, by doing that. But what does that look like the rest of the week, outside of Wednesday night, outside of maybe Sunday morning or a small group? What does that look like? Well, I want to go back to our foundational scripture that we'll have an opportunity to make a commitment to before this series ends, and that's in Joshua 24, verse 15. I'm going to read the second half of that scripture. Joshua is instructing the children of Israel that they can do what they desire to do. It's really, they can serve the other gods that they had served before that had gotten them in the mess they were in. I'm paraphrasing, of course. And then he says this in the second half of 15. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. So as we worship, it should be more than just teaching our children to come to church. We should serve the Lord inside our homes. There should be an act of service. What is service? Obedience. The Bible talks about obedience being better than sacrifice. That in the Old Testament, God had much rather them obey his commands and his words than to bring all these offerings. He said all of the blood of these animals mean nothing if you're not going to obey. And that's what we've been talking about from this framework. That we're framing up the word of God, but now we have to live that out. We have to worship in our homes. Our homes should be a place where we're serving God, that God is the head of that house. One of the great things about worship is that it puts everything else in perspective. It lines everything up. As I worship God, I elevate him. He increases and I decrease. As I elevate him in my home, he is the head of my house. And as we begin to lay that foundation, everyone that is in that house begins to understand and know that. So today, real quickly, we're going to look at three ways that our homes can be wrapped in worship. We're going to look at walled in grace, covered in prayer, and filled with love. So let's look at walled in grace first. How many of you know that if there's a place that needs grace, it's in the home? Because we act like our show enough selves we in the home, right? People know, you don't know anybody until you live with them, right? Isn't that what people say? If you've ever been to college, you really know that. You just don't know how nasty people can be until you live with a roommate that's just an old boy like you. It gets rough. But when you begin to grow together with people in a family setting or you're in your home on your own, there's grace that is needed there. You need 
that grace from the Lord. And so what is the grace that we are rolling this up in? Well, the grace of Jesus Christ, the foundation that we built this on, that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. That he gave his life so that we could have new life. And that grace that has been given to us, we need to give that grace to others. We need to be able to show them that grace, knowing that we were once sinners and we were once lost and undone. And I say all the time, people that don't know God act like they don't know God. And I don't know why we're always surprised by that. But we that know the Lord know that we are able, that we have been able to understand and know a new beginning, a new situation in our lives, a new condition that has happened here. We are saved by grace. And with that grace comes this opportunity to show others that grace. I know that I needed grace in my home when I was growing up. Very quickly, I will not tell this time that I put my dog, my uh, sister in the dryer, but I will tell another story about my sister. There's four, and I turned it off. I'm going to move on. I'm going to please, please, please. She would get there, and I would tell her she had the buckle, and she would be like, you need the buckle. But anyway, we'll move on. So my sister was four years younger than me. If you're listening today, hello. And we didn't have the three channels in my house, two if it was bad weather. I had to go outside and turn the, turn the antenna to get it right. And all we had on Saturday morning was cartoons and wrestling. And so we'd get wrestling, that's how I call it, wrestling. You know? And I'd try all the moves on my poor little sister after we got done. So she's been scarred for life, and I understand that, and I pray for her regularly now. She calls me her pastor, and I'm very shocked that she does that. But there was one time when we had in our home, we had a living room, and then we had a, 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 what my mother called a den. And we were not to go in the den, because that's where every, all the pretties were. Well, my sister and I like to open up both those doors and create a racetrack through them. And so I'm watching TV, and my sister's just running around. And every time she'd come by, she goes, eh. I can't tell you how annoying that is. So about the fifth lap through, I just reached out and grabbed her arm with all of my weight and just hung on. Well, sure enough, the little chicken wing popped out. And she's like, oh, I'm going, oh. She's like jerking around, hollering. I'm like, I can put it back in. I can put it back in. I couldn't put it back in. So I needed much grace. From my mom and my dad. Did I get disciplined? Absolutely. Did I get disciplined every time she thought about it? Even while I was sitting at the table, I could see she was starting to think about it. That, the dryers and other things. Yes. But I still got to live there. <laughs> I still got to eat. And she, if I asked her, she would tell me she loved me. So. And that's a funny story. But you and all, you all know in this room. There's things that you know about each other that I don't Because things happen inside those walls. Things go on. And what God is wanting to do is deal with some of that. Not that we don't discipline. Not that we don't hold each other accountable. But that His love comes in. His grace comes in. And there's a way that we are able to understand and accept each other. And so one of the things I'm learning about grace. Grace was always a taboo word when I was growing up in a holiness church. Grace was just something that, that weak people needed. Well, the older I got and the more I began to understand the trueness of God's love, the more I realized that I needed that grace. The only way I can live for God is to have that love in my life. And so grace is as much about pardon with the work that Jesus did on the cross. We know that God's called us and his word is very clear. We do not sin intentionally. That puts us in a very bad position with the Lord. And we do reap what we sow unless God takes it and takes it from us. But what I'm learning about grace in the last 24 months of my life is that it's a lot about strength. It's a lot about saying that he's doing it and I'm not doing it. That I cannot do it on my own. For the first time in my life, I've got something that I'm assuming is a mix between grief and anxiety. And I've never experienced anything like that before. So I've had to rely on him. And the Apostle Paul had something, an affliction that bothered him. He had something in his life that he asked God three times to remove. What that affliction is, many have debated, but we won't know until we get to heaven. 
Whatever it was, Paul considered it a great hindrance to him, his ministry, and his life. And so in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9, he tells us what God said as he asked him to that. He asked him on the third time, and 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, And he said to me, meaning the Lord saying to Paul, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. God's power, His miraculous, wonder-working power is perfected in my weakness, in your weakness. If there's something that the people live with us know, it's our weakness, right? And that's why it's so hard, heads of house, to pray over your family. Because they know you just acted like a total nut just a few minutes ago. Or you haven't done anything she's told you to do and you're fixing to grab the family and pray. Or you only do that when there's trouble. And so that's hard for you to do. And things happen that you don't intend to. I sat on my wife's iPad this week. That didn't go well. For me or the iPad. I got sleepy real quick. Time to go to bed. Let's sleep on it. Get up in the morning and talk about it. Grace is needed in the home. All of us have imperfections. All of us have things that we're working on. But please do not let that hinder you from stepping into your role, especially if you're the head of the house, you're the mom, you're the dad. Don't let those children manipulate you. I don't care what you were up to this point in this time. You can be a new mom, a new dad today in the name of Jesus, and you can move forward, and you can lead your home in the presence of the Lord. You're able to do that. Let's teach our children that. They know our weaknesses. They understand that. And so you just say, I know that I've got those issues. I've had to apologize for a, to a three-year-old in my home. My son's 15 now. But I had to apologize that I didn't handle something well. His mom was sick one time, and, and she's upstairs. And he's dealing with me, and I don't know how to be the mama. I, I'm not the mama. I'm not the mama. Anyway. So he's down there, and he's, he's telling me, I want mama. I said, I want mama too, buddy, but I don't know what to do. Because I'm trying to let her get well up there. She's got a, a bad sickness. And, and finally, I lose my patience with him. And I tell him, you need to man up to a three-year-old. You just need to suck it up. And I give him this long lecture and that little lips. Nobody, I'm going to be nobody's pastor after that. I'm saved by grace. So, I realized what I've done. And I said, son, I didn't handle that very well. I apologize to you. That is not what a godly dad should do with his son. And he said, well, dad, that kind of freaked me out. <laughs> and I said, well, that kind of freaked me out, and I'm freaked out too. Let's pray for mama. He said, that sounds good. Let's pray for mama. So, you know, those people in your home, they know you. You can't fake it till you make it in the house, right? So what we have to do is we allow God to come into our lives and give us grace. Each layer of this siding, as you see it here, some of you are looking at the front of this. Each layer of this siding, each brick on that example that I have up there, that is brick by brick, lap siding by lap siding. That is grace by grace by grace. Attempt to work through the power of the Lord Ask for forgiveness and you move forward. That's how you build a home. No one is perfect, church. We all have troubles. We all have trials. We all have tribulations. It is time that we are graceful with one another. It is time that we put the God as the head of that house. And we allow, even in our weaknesses, that we move forward just like this siding lies up and covers this house. We are covered by God's grace and also the grace that we have for each other. Amen? Also, I want us to look at now, let's look at covered in prayer. So we're going to look at the top of the house. This is Black Den, by the way. Thanks again to Craig Farr, who's done most of this work. Samuel has helped him. Others of us are going to contribute when we get to our skill sets, which is nothing as good as this guy said. He is definitely overachieving. The Lord bless you and keep you, Craig Farr. That's good stuff right there. I am looking for this covering. We will have shingles on this at some point, but right now it is now covered. Last week it was praying. So how do we cover our homes? Well, we cover it in prayer. Prayer changes things, right? It either changes you 
or your situation. Either way, change comes. If you've been around me for a long time, many of you are nodding your heads. That's how I look at prayer. Prayer is either going to change me where I can make it through. God doesn't always change my situation. The Apostle Paul, if anybody needed their prayers answered, it was him. But he didn't get it with the thorn in his flesh. But it's going to change me where I can move forward. Sometimes those prayers are changed through my situation. But as I begin to pray, it puts everything in perspective just like worship does. It puts God at the head of the house. I am in obedience to him and I am praying in my home. It is important that our children hear us praying in our homes. It's important that we are heard praying in our homes. And I'm not talking about going to separate places and pray. My wife and I do that great. We have sometimes struggled to pray together because we have our own walks. But I have been purposeful during this series to do that. And it's amazing how much Hunter makes sure that we do that if we miss it. If you get it in the habit of your children, they are going to want you to pray. So we are covered in prayer. If we're looking to change our homes, that's what needs to happen. I am here because of a praying mother, because of a praying wife. I'm standing before you today knowing that prayer works. Prayer is able to change things that you never, ever felt that could be changed. I remember preaching a revival as a young minister about 20 years ago. And praying for a young lady that was married to her husband. He'd never been to church. They'd been married several years. Never been to church. He was not uh, living his life according to the word of God. The house was a, a wreck. She was struggling. She didn't want to leave him. And she said, I want us to pray. And the Lord led me to pray over just a napkin. I got a tissue and, and we anointed it with oil. And for those of you who are not familiar with all of those practices, the Apostle Paul prayed over rags and sent it to places and they were healed. The oil is the representation of the covenant. The blood is the blessing. I'm going to read about oil here in just a second at this point. But it's just a symbol of the faith. There's no power in that tissue. There's no power in it but the faith that we pray to get The belief that we have that God's going to do something. So I prayed over that. And I, she said, I, I, I said, I want you to take this home and put it somewhere. Put it somewhere so he can be around it. And I, we're going to pray and believe that he's going to come. Well, that was the first night of the revival. Well, the last night of the revival, here he comes with her. His eyes are all black. She put that tissue in his pillowcase. And he ain't slept a week in four days. And I said, are you ready to receive the Lord? He said, I'm ready to get some sleep. <laughs> and I said, well, did you know that God loves you? And I began to walk him through a very long process of him giving up all the pain, all the hurt, all those things that made him do those things he did. God saved him. He healed him. He delivered him. Prayer works. That family is back together. I am looking at families out here who are back together because God set you free from those things that were destroying you. And I'm looking at other families that you're going to be able to make it. I know. God is telling me. I'm not calling out names. I'm not saying I know exactly who you are. But there are families on the brink of destruction in this house and listening in. God can change that. But you have to start with prayer. What happens when I begin to pray? What happens when we get together together and we pray as a family? Let's look at the passage of Scripture in Psalms 133, 1 through 3. That's the whole psalm if you want to look it up later. The psalmist says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head coming down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, coming down upon the edge of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, coming down upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forever. Amen to the word of God. So as we pray, it's a blessing. It's the anointing. It's the presence of God that we were talking about earlier. It begins to flow down. And what they're discussing there, the psalmist is discussing Moses. Moses, Moses, Moses anointing Aaron. And he anointed him with oil. That same oil I'm talking about, the blessing of God, the presence of God, it flowed off of his head, down into his beard, and then began to drip off his robe. As you and I pray, the presence of God, somebody, the presence of the Lord. I felt that, maybe y'all didn't, but anyway. The presence of the Lord begins to come and saturate this house. If you've never had that happen, 
go home and pray and ask the Lord to saturate the house with his presence. It will anoint everything. Anointing means uh, a rite of passage. It means authority. It means setting things in order the way that it should be. And so God allows that to happen. There's a blessing there. There's a unity. If you have strife in your home, prayer can change that. Prayer can bring peace. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy Prayer brings healing. It brings healing to emotions, healing to bodies, healings to families. And I also read here it brings blessing. That anointing was a blessing. That, that anointing oil was that blessing and it brings life. Just like dew brings new life to that mountainside. And they're able to get the moisture they need from the dew off that mountain. God blesses that. Those things that we thought were dead can be revived in Jesus' name. Through the prayer of that family. If you are a teenager and you're listening to me, you're the only believer in your house, that's all right. Go to your room and pray. It's amazing what God can do. The Bible says in Hebrews 1.14, angels are summoned to those that believe. I believe as we pray, there are angels encamped around our house to do spiritual warfare for us. God is able to do something in your family if you let him. But that all begins humbling yourself, getting on your knees. Now let's look at feel with love. These walls are full of all kinds of unseen things today. Just like a house would be. We can't see inside anymore. That's been walled up except for the windows. Those are coming. As you look there on the visual there, we have electric. We have plumbing. We have HVAC, hopefully. That's going to be heated and cooled. Other things are in those walls that we don't think much about. That we take for granted. We go to the wall and switch on the electricity, we go to the sink and turn it on, water flows out of it, but let Katrina come and see what happens, right? Talking to people that know, my son wouldn't know what to do if he didn't have Wi-Fi. He would think he was living in perilous times, <laughs> but it happens. So those things that are in those walls are things that make things happen. There are things that provide what we need. And I know many times in my own home, and many times in my home with my mother, there were times that I should have told her I loved her that I didn't. There were times I should have shown it more than I did, but I knew that her love was always there for me. And she knew that my love was always there for her. And as you began to establish your spiritual home, God's going to lay those things in there. That breath of God, that that living water that comes out of us as new believers begins to flow into our relationships, begins to flow into our home. That water that saved us, that cleansed us, that made us white as snow, that delivered us from those past sins and those past habits, that begins to flow and that begins to fill the home with love. That power that caused Jesus to hang on that cross and say, not my will, Lord, but your will be done. That power that allowed him to give his life, that power that allowed him to be rose up from the grave that third day. That power now lives in me and you, and therefore I can love like nobody else could love. Because now I have His love in me, and that love is resonating out. That love is filling my home. That love is filling my walls. And if that doesn't look like your home, don't get mad at your spouse. Do what you can do. You can only change you. You can only fix you. God doesn't take free will, so how are we going to take free will? But you can give your will to the Lord. You can will it to Him and say, Lord, I want to be more like you. I want to be filled with your love so I can fill this home. I can fill this, this apartment. I can fill this, this mobile home, this camper, whatever it, that place is for you, with your love. So that we can understand and know that when we need it, we can find it. When we need that power, we can find it. When we need that water, we can find it. When we need to feel that warmth of that love, we can find it. Colossians 3, 12 through 14 says, So as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other, whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. Beyond all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. A 
Amen. So as we allow that which has been done to us, the Bible says to him, much is given, much is required. As I begin to understand that great love and how it changed me, that great love begins to radiate in my home and it's unified. The fact that this siding is on, the fact that this plywood is up here now, the fact that this sheeting is on makes this house stronger than it was before. We would not be able to withstand the wind and the rain until all of that happened. Because of that great love, we are able to make something in our lives, make something in our relationships, make something in our family, make something in this church because we are bound with love. Love allows us to have compassion. It allows us to have kindness. It allows us to be humble. It allows us to be gentle and patient. Bearing and forgiving is what the scripture I just read says. Just like Jesus did for us. Beyond all these things, put on love. The perfect calm. Insulation holds all the warmth in this house. A good house is insulated. A good home that God has called us to do is insulated with love. Amen? Let's close today with just a few thoughts as the praise team comes. So just a few questions for you today. Does this home sound like your home today? Is it wrapped in worship? Is God the head of the house? Is it person? Is he first and foremost? How gracious is the atmosphere of your home? How gracious is the atmosphere of your marriage? How gracious is the atmosphere with your children? Is your home a place where weaknesses can be exposed? And we can build those people up. Our children need to find refuge in our house. This world is tough. Many kids are being bullied. Many kids suicidal. We've got to be able to make home a place where they can come and share, where they can get that out, where we can work on those weaknesses. And guess what? Some of those weaknesses may just be who they are. And we celebrate that. How much grace is there? How much grace is in your home? Is it all with grace? How many layers of this do you have? You can make another one today. You can make it right today. Also, is it covered in prayer? What's your prayer life like in the home? Where are you at with it today? I've already shared with you. I've had to work on it. God's shown me where I need to do better. Pray corporately with my family. Lastly, today, is it filled with love? Is it filled with love or is it filled with arguments and strife? If it is, just ask the Lord to fill it with love. We're going to clean the house soon enough. When construction's done, in a few weeks, we're going to clean the house. And it's important today that you decide that you choose love. That you're going to choose love. And the first love that may need to be chosen today, with heads bowed and eyes closed, could be the love of God in your own heart. But you don't know Him today the way I'm talking about as Lord and Savior. There's sin between you and Him. There's a sin habit that you know He's been dealing with ever since I got started today. Whether you're listening or you're in the house. Or you know this relationship that you are destined to have with Jesus is not that. You know it, but you're not following Him. He's looking to lead you somewhere, but you refuse to go. You're trying to do your own thing and do your own way. If that's you today, let's get it right, right here this morning. Let's ask the Lord to forgive us. Forgive us of our sins and shortcomings. Deliver us from those habits that we want to be out of our lives. And let's declare today that Jesus is Lord of our life. That love will never fail. Secondly, if you want me to pray with you as a family, it started last week, I'm hoping it continues. I'll, I'm here, I'll pray with you. I'll affirm your salvation here and pray. But if you just want to pray where you are as a family, it's over. We're about to dismiss. We're almost done. But if you want to come to these sides and pray, no one's going to bother you. You can pray on your own. If you need the Lord to give you more grace, if you need Him to strengthen your weaknesses, if you need Him to give you more discipline in your prayer life, you need to fill you with love today. Now's the time. Let's pray for one another and let's pray together as we sing and worship.
you're listening in, when you're in the house today, you rededicated your life to the Lord, you made a decision to follow Jesus Christ today, you just let us know, we'll leave you where you are, just by raising your hand or messaging us if you're on social media today, we want to celebrate with you. If you're in the house today, you've made a decision that you and your family are going to go forward with the Lord. You just make that notification in your own way. Let's give the Lord praise for what He's done in the house today. Amen. Yeah. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May His countenance rest upon you. May He wrap your homes in grace. May He cover them with His presence. And may He fill them with love. And may we celebrate our mothers today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.